Welcome to Chronic Health. I'm your host, Ryan Lovis, and today we'll be doing a study analysis where we take a particular study, break it down, see what's in it, and what can we take and apply it to our lives. The study we're looking at today is No Time to Lift, Designing Time-Efficient Training Programs for Strength and Hypertrophy. If you'd like to read the entire study, I'll put a link to it in the description below. The purpose of this study, or the purpose of this video, is to find the minimal amount needed to gain muscle. Whether you're trying to increase your strength or just increase the overall size, increase the hypertrophy of it. Now, if you're looking for what's optimal or what you're going to uh, do to get to your genetic maximum, this is not the study for you. This is not the video for you. This is to those that want to maintain the muscle they have. They like where they're at. They live a busy life and they only have a little bit of time they can carve out for a workout. Well, what's the minimal amount you need to still gain muscle or to still gain strength? And so that's what this study is talking about. So first off, let's talk about amount of training or times per week. Uh, you really only need to train one time per week. A 2018 meta-analysis from Ralston, uh, he was comparing one day a week versus three days a week. The author found only negligible greater increases in strength gains from higher frequencies for a mixed population. Uh, another meta-analysis in 2018 from Schoenfeld said, quote, found no compelling evidence that training frequency, days a week, confers a meaningful impact on muscle hypertrophy when training volume, sets and reps, is matched. Frequency, how many times you train per week, is not as important as the volume, as the work you're putting in. And even if you have the right days a week, sets, reps, your effort is what really breaks it down, what it really comes down to. How much effort are you putting into each set, each rep? How much effort are you putting in? Because if you're not training them, if you're not challenging the muscle, you're never going to grow the muscle. So times per week isn't as important as volume, the sets and reps you put into each time you work out. Now let's move on to sets. How many sets do we actually need to do? Well, one set of six to 12 reps, two to three times a week really is the minimum. A 2020 meta-analysis says, quote, a single set of six to 12 repetitions using 70 to 85% of your one rep max loading for two to three times per week was identified as the minimum effective training dose to increase one rep max strength in resistance trained men. Now that's resistance trained men. What about newbies? What about people that are just getting into it? A 2007 study found, quote, similar improvements in strength and hypertrophy in upper body muscles from training with one versus three sets over three times per week. Now, you can split up, you split up these sets anytime you want. You can split them up over multiple times a week or, like I said at the beginning, just one day a week. Next, let's talk about reps. When it comes to reps, you can use a wide range of repetitions, whether that's lower reps like six to eight reps or higher of 15 to 20 or even upwards of 40 reps, you can use a wide range to get strength and hypertrophic gains. A 2017 meta-analysis from Schoenfeld found, quote, similar hypertrophic responses occur across a wide spectrum of rep ranges as long as training is performed with a high level of effort and the number of sets is equated or equal. Uh, they went on to, quote, investigated the effects of training with high loads compared to low loads and found similar increases in hypertrophy. Uh, he does go on to mention that specifically for strength, higher loads tend to be superior. Higher loads of higher weight, lower reps, more sets. That's higher loads. Um, and then, of course, that brings the idea of training to failure. What about training to failure? A 2006 study, quote, training to muscular failure is not essential to increase muscular growth and strength gains when heavy loads are used. It says heavy loads specifically, quote, but if low loads more than 15 repetitions are utilized, training should be performed at or close to muscular failure. So if you're gonna use a higher reps, you're really gonna to wanna to get closer to that uh, point of failure. Next, let's move on to resting. This study mentions that common guidelines recommend a three to five minute rest interval when training to maximize strength, one to two minute rest when the goal is hypertrophy, and 30 to 60 second rest when the goal is muscular endurance. A 2017 systematic review said, quote, short rest intervals, meaning less than one minute, produced robust strength gains in both untrained and trained individuals. Now, this review does go on to say that longer rest intervals are better, but on the surface, can, this can seem confusing. But what I want you to take away from this is that whether it's, it's short rest intervals or long rest intervals, you can still receive good gains when it comes to strength and hypertrophy. 
Now, again, this is not talking about what's optimal or what's going to get you to your genetic maximum. This is talking about if you're strapped for time and all you got is 30 seconds to take your rest, be confident that you'll still get some good gains if you're only taking 30 seconds. But if you say, hey, I want to do what's best for me, take longer than 30 seconds. Next, let's move on to warm-ups. Uh, this study mentions two types of warm-ups. It talks about general and specific warm-ups. Um, general is, you know, a few minute run on a treadmill. Specific is where you do the work that you're or work the muscle you're going to be working out, but you do a very light load. If, if it's squats, you know, maybe do just the bar. That's a specific, wor a specific warm up for squats. Um, a 2014 study said, quote, neither a general nor specific warm up provided any benefits regarding fatigue or total repetitions for exercises such as bench press, squats, and arm curl during submaximal strength training. Basically saying that one group, the, the general warm-up group, didn't get any more reps in than the specific warm-up group. They both saw um, about the same results. Uh, he compares this to no warm-up in recreationally trained men. The study goes on to say that, quote, it is likely that a need for a warm-up is more important when training in low repetition range using heavy weights as the initial repetitions could be considered a specific warm-up when training with higher repetitions. Basically, I mean, if I'm using a real light weight and my goal is 30 reps, well, my first several reps aren't going to be hard at all. That can be considered your specific warm-up or that could be considered your warm-up. Now, let's move on to stretching. You know, is it necessary or is it even beneficial? The study mentions several other studies in saying, quote, static stretching leads to an acute loss of strength and power, so so-called so stretch-induced strength loss, and should therefore probably not be performed before strength training. So if you're training for strength, probably not a good idea to stretch before. However, the type of stretching that these studies are referencing is a 30 to 60 minute and shorter, you know, stretching period. I'm sure if time is of the essence, you're not going to be stretching for 30 minutes. Uh, the study goes on to say that, quote, impairment in strength and power primarily applies to longer sessions and not to shorter bouts, you know, less than 60 seconds per muscle group. So honestly, if you're just, you know, stretch a muscle, hold it for 10 seconds, stretch the other muscle, hold it for 10 seconds, it's not talking about that, but it's talking about if you're dedicating actual time to stretching, there can be a certain percentage of strength loss if you're really getting a good deep stretch. In regards to stretching, the study goes on to say, quote, stretching should not be prioritized unless an important goal of the training is to increase mobility. Again, it's similar to warming up. Do what feels comfortable. Do what makes you feel confident to do the work. If doing a quick few second stretch on either arm or either leg makes you feel good, makes you feel ready to put up the weight, I say go ahead and do it. Now, again, if you're stretching for an hour, okay, there might be some strength loss there, so just keep that in, keep that in mind. Uh, last, let's talk about types of exercises. Choosing a type of exercise, whether that be weights, body weights, or resistance bands, are all viable options to achieve hypertrophic or strength gains. This study does mention that, uh, specifically in terms of like body weight and resistance bands, that gains can be made, but it's going to take a little bit more effort to continuously challenge the muscle when you're doing those things. You're going to have to get creative. You're going to have to, you know, find new ways to do it because it's with weights, it's just as easy as adding another plate to the bar, adding some more weight to, to the cable, whatever it may be. But with body weight and resistance bands, you might have to get creative if you continuously want to challenge the muscle. Finally, uh, let's just sum a bit of this up. Uh, you can use a wide range of sets, reps, times per week to make gains or even to uh, maintain the muscle you do have. Whatever you have time to fit in, try to fit in something. Something is 100% better than nothing. Uh, if you're looking for exact numbers, at least four sets per week per muscle group using a 16 to 15 rep range. Uh, you can even use upwards of 40 reps as long as you're getting close to failure. Uh, you can even do all of this in a single day. So one day, one workout, you'll be good till the next day, the next workout. Uh, and I really, I mentioned it a few times, but I really want to drive home the point of effort. If you're not giving good effort, if you're not giving your muscle a reason to grow, it's not going to grow. If you're doing the same reps, same sets, day after day, week after week, your muscle is going to plateau. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to grow the way you want to. You have to continuously give good effort. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to read this study in its entirety, I just highlighted a few points. I mean, a few of the key points that I found most helpful. And whenever someone asks me about certain workouts, these are some of the things that always come up, sets, reps, times per week, stuff like that. I encourage you, go read it for yourself. It touches on a lot more of um, just different variables that might come into play, stuff you might find interesting, stuff you might find boring. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, what you think, what you eat, and what you do all create a life of chronic health. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.